Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to create server role in SQL Server. Uh, we'll be using two methods using SQL Server Management Studio graphic user interface and using T-SQL script. I want to give a couple scenarios that why we wanted to create SQL Server role. First scenario is, let's say that you have a database administrator team and some of the DBAs are senior DBAs and other, other DBAs are junior DBAs. So you wanted to kind of distinguish, uh, you know, what a senior DBA could do and what a junior DBA can do because uh, it is not really a good idea to give a sysadmin role which is very um, alleviated uh, high level SQL Server role you don't want to give that SQL uh, that uh, sysadmin role to every DBA in your team so you would like to distinguish between uh, junior DBA role and senior DBA role so you wanted to create some of the uh, SQL Server role that and assign those junior DBAs uh, to that particular role and uh, senior DBA could have system uh, administration role. Uh, the other scenario that uh, you have a developer team, uh, that development team basically support your production issues. Uh, all the application that's running in production, they have to support that issues. And sometimes if issue is related to SQL Server, they would like to know some state of the SQL Server, which is uh, uh, you can create a SQL, uh, server role and assign that particular uh, development team, uh, production support development team, that they can look at uh, SQL Server state, they could look, look at all the databases. Let's say that during the installation, it's a critical ins installation for production rollout and uh, they would like to see if the database has been created on that particular uh, SQL Server instance. So that's, uh, 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 these are the couple um, scenarios under which you would like to create a separate user-defined uh, SQL Server role. One other thing that uh, in some of the organization uh, you would, uh, for the security reason, they would like to disable the public SQL Server role. I'll show you in a second that uh, what default SQL Server roles are there. So if they, if you wanted to disable the public role, you have to create some sort of role that uh, every login that you create, at least they should have that kind of role, especially logging to SQL Server, which is basically uh, um, back behind the idea of public role, but uh, it's not really... Uh, public role has much more alleviated uh, permissions than just connecting to SQL Server. So these are the scenarios that I thought that I would like to mention before we get into creating server role so that you understand why do we need to basically create SQL Server role. So let's go ahead. This is my SQL Server and I'm connected with uh, uh, using uh, SQL Server Management Studio. This is my Tech Brothers client, my server and SQL Mirror is my SQL Server instance. In order to create a server role, you need to uh, expand your SQL Server instance. You need to expand uh, security up here, and you will see a server roles up here under security. You need to expand that, and these are the by default uh, uh, server roles that you get. And that's bulk admin DB creator. Keep in mind, DB creator is a bit dangerous. Um, it's uh, what the name suggests, DB creator doesn't mean that it can only create uh, uh, databases but it can also delete the databases and you uh, in separate video I'll uh, show you that uh, how destructive DB, DB creator can be but uh, there are other uh, roles SQL Server roles that we can create uh, different roles that can do just the DB creation uh, and will prevent those uh, users who are in DB creator uh, not to delete any database on your particular production instance. So disk admin, process admin, public. Up here, public is uh, is usually um, SQL Server role that gets assigned to every login that you create on SQL Server instance. Um, public, basically, I, I th this is my own opinion, that uh, when it, it was meant to, you know, assign a, a, a role, SQL Server role, when you create a login, just to log into the SQL Server. But it has much more alleviated permissions uh, in, in SQL Server instance than just connect to the SQL Server. We can basically disable, and some of the organization uh, really, spe uh, especially the banks like to disable the public role and create their own public role uh, that they will assign to every login that they will create. So uh, other roles are security admin, server admin, setup admin, and sysadmin. This is most destructive. Uh, sysadmin can do anything on this particular instance. 
So what we would like to do, as I suggested some of the scenarios, taking those scenarios, we're going to go ahead and create our own SQL uh, uh, server role, and we will assign later on the users uh, to that particular role. So in order to create um, a new SQL server role, so you're going to go ahead and right click on the server role, click on new. And first you need to uh, click on uh, ser SQL server name you need to give the name of name to that particular role so I'm going to give uh, server state junior DBA so or I would just say junior DBA let me just junior DBA so this is my role owner uh, up here you can have owner SA or whoever you wanted to uh, have the owner of this particular role you can go ahead and uh, do that click OK so up here if you look at the uh, scurables these are server scurables these are not database scurables so we're gonna go ahead and uh, endpoints uh, so far uh, up here these are the endpoints if endpoints gets created you wanted to uh, have this particular role manage the endpoints such as TC equal default TCP via and local machine and named pipe protocols you can go ahead any transactional SQL server any transaction coming through these protocols that you would like this particular junior DBA that to manage that you can uh, basically give that uh, select that these roles but more I'm concerned about right now in this particular video is server this is your server uh, instance as you can see that TBS client is my machine and SQL mirror is my production SQL server uh, instant so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that and let me make it a little bigger and I'm going to move it a little up if you if I can anyway so right here all are the all the permissions uh, let's say that you wanted to this particular server role you want this particular server role to alter any credential create alter any um, um, endpoints but in this particular video what I want to do is alter uh, not not alter don't give any alter permission to this junior DBA I just want them to connect to SQL server that's good I want them to basically view any database state view any definition view server state so let's say that these are the functionalities I want my junior DBA to perform and maybe we can select uh, some other uh, create let me find a good permissions right here okay create availability group so this group can go ahead and create availability group as well so um, right here it has its own basically scurable availability group you can select that and uh, uh, click okay you don't need to really give permissions when once you click on availability group it gives all the permission to availability group a person can create availability group and a person can fail over the availability group and it can add the secondary replicas it can uh, you know from primary replicas it can do all what uh, uh, administrator can do from availability point of view so we we selected the roles so click on members here are the members that you would like to add let's say that I don't have mem many members basically in my uh, um, is this server so I'm going to go ahead and browse and this is my right here is SQL DB reader this is um, you may want to just consider it junior DBA uh, uh, group so I'm going to go ahead and select this group and I'm going to say that okay these are the members of this particular server role so you can add members remove members later on once you created the role so basically um, I'm going to do that if you don't want to basically create and um, right here grant uh, the server level explicit permissions you can click on membership and select any of these uh, server roles that's by default server roles that you can uh, uh, you can provide as well but we're not concerned about that because our scenarios are 
uh, basically um, create our own role where we can do some of the DB creator uh, creator role, some of the um, process admin, some of the setup admin, but not completely all of it. So we're going to go ahead and click on general, click OK. And as you can see, if you refresh, this junior DBA server role is created. So what I'm going to do next is delete this SQL server um, server role and create the same thing using T-SQL script. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. And let's load the SQL script that I have uh, already created. Create server role. Connect. As you can see right here, these are the roles that I'm connect to any database. View any database definition right here. View server state. And I'm going to add Kevin Scott, that is uh, a one user that uh, junior DBA that I want that uh, I want him to be added in this particular role. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run this, execute this script. As you can see that command completed successfully, we're going to go ahead and refresh our server role and see if this server role is created. My server role right here. This is the name of my server role. So my server role is created and we have added um, uh, Kevin Scott to that particular server role. So basically this is in SQL Server, this is how you create a user-defined uh, user defined, uh, uh, user -defined uh, SQL Server role uh, and uh, using SQL Server Management Studio and using T-SQL Script. And I hope this video helps.